Okay, so we're going to talk about equivalence and then talk about a new derivable rule called diamond or diamond elimination. So based on what we've learned so far in quantificational logic, we've looked at something like if we have for all x, px, this is going to be equivalent to there does not exist an x not px. And I'm leaving some space in my original translation because this is essentially where we have positives. We don't write positives. Um, but essentially, when we do the conversion, we change the positives to negatives, the negatives to positives, and then we take our quantifier and we flip it. Now, this is exactly the same thing that is happening with diamond P and box P. So diamond P, or possibly P, is equivalent to not necessarily not P, or not box not P. So we can see we're adding a negation before each of the operators and the propositional formula, the main one, and then we're changing the box to the diamond, so the weaker to the stronger, or the stronger to the weaker. So what this means is that we could have something like not box P, and using this equivalent exchange, the positive, sorry, the negative becomes a positive, the box becomes a diamond, the positive before the P becomes negative, and then we keep the P as is. So this is how we can do the translation. This would be the same thing as saying that for not for all x, px would be equivalent to exists in x, not px. So you can see the parallels in these two. Okay, so let's first start with a proof because this proof is going to be important for showing our derivable rule diamond elimination. So we want to show that box p arrow q entails diamond P arrow diamond Q, or, or proves it. We're really working with the proof system here, so it proves it. Okay, so let's start with assuming that we have box P arrow Q. This will be line one. This is our first assumption. Okay, now our goal is to get diamond P arrow diamond Q. Now, whenever we have something in this position, what we're going to have to do is assume it for a conditional proof. So we're going to assume diamond P, and at the end of it, we're going to get diamond Q out of it, and then we're going to get diamond P out of diamond Q. That's what we want. Okay, so this will be line two. This will be the start of a new subproof. I'm not going to indent it as much. I'll indent it a little bit. Uh, so what do we do now? Well, we're going to use our definition of diamond P so we can work with boxes because we have rules for boxes. We don't have rules for diamonds right now. So this is the same thing as not box, not P. This is two, and this is the definition of the box or definition of the diamond. All right, let's get rid of the brackets there. Okay, so we have not box, not P. We need to get diamond Q. And okay, what's the easiest way to do this? Well, in my mind, I'm thinking, well, if we can get not diamond Q, if we can assume that, and then we can find a contradiction, then what we're going to get out of it is not not diamond Q, which is the same thing as diamond Q, and that would be ideal. But if we assume not diamond Q, uh, we're going to have to do some, some changes to it to get it in a box form so we can actually use it in the proof. So instead, I know that not diamond Q is the same thing as box not Q. These, these two are equivalent. So in line four, I'm going to make that assumption. I'm going to start with box not Q. And I essentially want to get not box not Q or box not P. So that way we can get a contradiction and we can change it to the form that we want. So let's set that up as another subroof. Okay, we're not quite done yet because now we have some boxes we can work with in line one and line four. So we're going to have to introduce a new box subproof in line five so we can get into that world. Uh, so we'll start up a new thing here. Maybe these lines will be long enough. Okay, so that's our fifth line in this proof. In other words, our third new assumption we're making. So now that we're inside the box, we can pull some stuff that's outside the box into the box. So in line one, we have box P arrow Q, which means we can pull P arrow Q into our box subproof. So this is line one, and this is box elimination or box out. 
Uh, in line four, we also have box not Q. So we can do the same thing here. We can pull the not Q out from the box. So from line four, this is another case of box elimination. Now, if we just make some room on the right side of the screen here, we have a rule that we can use. And that is if we have P arrow Q and we have not Q, then we're going to get not P. Now, this is called modus tollens or abbreviated as MT. And how we can see this is that P arrow Q is equivalent by the contrapositive to not Q arrow not P. So then if we have not Q, we get not P out of it. We've proven this for, before in the propositional logic section, so we won't do the whole subproof here. We'll just use that theorem because we have the option. So that's going to give us not P. And this is from line six and seven with modus tollens. Okay, so now we have box and then a bunch of stuff and we got not P at the end. So we can pull out box not P. So this is from five to eight, and this will be box introduction or box in. Now this is important because we have not box not P in line three, and now we have box not P in line nine. So if we extend our line just a little bit, maybe we can grab it like this and extend it. We'll have to extend these ones too. The proof's gonna go off the page, that's okay. Now we have not box not P. I'll just put it here for reiteration purposes. So this is line three, reiteration. Now we have a contradiction. So because we have a contradiction, some of the stuff that we did before, our assumptions are kind of nice now because we started by assuming box not Q. We got a contradiction there. So now we know that our assumption was false and actually we have not box not Q. So from four to 10 here, we did contradiction also known as RA or reductio ad absurdum. Now, what do we know about not box not Q? Well, we had a rule before that talks about the definition of what diamond Q is and how that translates. So this is just the same thing as diamond Q. So 11, we're using the definition of the box once again. Okay, at this point, it's great because we started with an assumption in line two that was diamond P. We got the diamond Q out of it. So based on the fact that we've done a conditional proof, we can extend our line here and then in line 13, we can get diamond P, arrow, diamond Q, and that's from two to 12 with a conditional proof. So here, we have the proof that if we start with box P, arrow, Q, we can get diamond P, arrow, diamond Q. Every single time we have a diamond, we don't wanna be doing this whole thing. It's a little bit too much. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna introduce a new rule. We're gonna prove that the rule works and then we don't have to waste so much time writing that whole thing out every time. So we have a new rule that says, if we assume diamond A, then if we assume a box and we get a proof of A to B, then we can pull diamond B out. Basically what's happening here is we're using this theorem that if we have box A arrow B, we're going to get diamond A arrow B. So this part right here is our box A to B. Our thing up here is our diamond A, and the result that we're going to get out of it is going to be diamond B. So we can see this theorem in action in this rule, but let's prove that it works. So in order to prove this, we're going to have to set up some assumptions. I'm going to put the bars in after. So first, we're going to start with an assumption of diamond A. We're going to introduce a subproof, assume A within that subproof, and we're going to get B out of that. So at this point, our rule is set up. Let's prove that the rule works. So we'll set up these bars. I think I know how far they have to go. And then we have one more subproof here. Okay, so the bars aren't quite straight, that's okay. So we have one, two, three, uh, let's just call this I, because we don't know what value this is. This could be the fourth line, this could be the fifth line or whatever. So what we can do in line I plus one afterwards is we can pull out a arrow B. This is a conditional proof. So from three to I, we have a conditional proof. Now we have a box and we've found a arrow B based on our assumptions. So what we can do is pull out box A arrow B. So this should be a box here. So from lines two to I plus one, 
This is box introduction or box in. Okay, at this point, we could just do the proof that we did on the previous slide, since we have box A, R, O, B, and we can show that if we have diamond A, then we have diamond B, but we've already done that. So instead, we're just going to use that theorem that says if we have box A, R, O, B, then we're going to get diamond A, arrow, diamond B. This is just a shorthand for everything on the previous slide. We could put the entire 13 line proof here again. We don't need to. So let's just call them theorem and then I'll write previous that we've seen. Okay, so this is great because now in line one, we have diamond A. In line I plus three, we have diamond A, arrow, diamond B. Therefore, we can apply modus ponens to it and get diamond B out of it. So from line one and line I plus three, we use modus ponens, or we also use what's called conditional elimination. You may have learned that. So this is the proof that our rule works. Now, instead of having to do the entire subproof every time, as long as we have this bit right here, then we can pull the diamond version of the consequent out. Okay, does that sound good? It's gonna make the next proof a lot easier. So let's use diamond elimination to show that diamond P and Q proves diamond P and diamond Q. So how are we gonna do this? Well, let's set up an assumption that we have diamond P and Q as part of our setup. Now, what we have to do at this point is we have to introduce a subproof according to our rule with a box and within that box subproof, we have to assume whatever's in our diamond, so P and Q. So we're essentially going to be having a, a couple longer proofs. In fact, I don't wanna make these boxes too long, but this is what our setup looks like. And we'll give these some numbers, one, two, and three. Now from line three, we have P and Q. So we can just use and elimination and we can get P out of it. That's great, so three, and elimination, we've seen this many times before. And based on the rule that we have, so we have the setup, we have a diamond, we have a box, we have the assumption in the diamond, and we found P. So what this means, and I'll use a different color for this, is that we can pull diamond P out of it. And this from one to four is our diamond out or diamond elimination rule. Okay, so now we need to get diamond Q. Now we can do the same thing. In fact, just to make it easier, let's just copy and paste the subproof because it's gonna be exactly the same. So let's move down. Uh, so this is gonna be line six, seven, and eight. The issue is we don't wanna get P this time. We wanna get Q because we wanna get diamond Q out. So we'll do the same subproof, but get Q out of it. So uh, what are we doing? In line seven, we're doing and elimination. I need to extend this bar a little bit further. And what that means, based on the same thing that we've done before, we can now pull diamond Q out of it. We'll use white for that. Okay, and where's that coming from? That's coming from one with our original assumption for diamond P and Q. And then from six to eight, we've proven the rest. And this is going to be diamond elimination once again. Okay, great. Now in line five, we have diamond P. In line nine, we have diamond Q. So in line 10, we can use and introduction and we can put them both together. So diamond P and diamond Q. This is from five, nine, and this is and introduction. So at that point, the proof is complete. We now know how to use the diamond elimination rule and we can now use it in our proofs. Because you can imagine if we didn't have this rule, what we would actually have to do in order to solve this. Uh, these lines, this proof would be over 25, 30 lines if we had to do the full way, but thanks to our new theorem and rules, we're able to do this quite quickly. If you have any questions, you know what to do.